Hello everyone. So I had something that I'd like to share, uh, a topic that I thought was very interesting because I've come in contact with some people who thought this very thing, but I wanted to share it with you so that maybe I might be able to shed some light and to be able to help someone. Every sign is not from God. It is very important for us to know that everything that happens, and by signs I mean like if something happens, um, we think it's God <clears throat> telling us to go for the job or to pursue this or to pursue that or to not do something. And um, I've found that every sign or everything that we think is a sign is not necessarily from God. What we have to understand right here is that the spiritual world is vast and extremely complicated, and it's not governed by the dictates of our human understanding. So how we see life and how we function in this earthly realm, in the realm where we can see, taste, touch, feel everything is not the same way that the spiritual realm operates. I've heard people say that the spiritual realm is more real than the natural realm. And that is because the spiritual realm dictates what goes on in the natural realm, regardless of whether I've found that I've, I've seen it in the Bible. And um, I found that in life that whatever goes on here is because something was decided in the spiritual realm in the heavenlies first i've learned that i've learned that nothing happens by chance everything was decided in some way shape or form in the spiritual realm before we see the manifestation of anything here in the natural realm there is a plan for each and every one of our lives as soon as we come into this world. There is a plan actually before we are born, um, before we take our first breath, there's a plan, but I'll start from the time that we actually enter into this world. There are familiar spirits that are part of our lineage that are part of our family line, which have the job of enforcing certain strongholds. There are certain things that are, um, I want to say particular to our family or our bloodline, we can see as a reoccurrence. And it's not, it's not, I don't want to say a curse. It's not necessarily anything bad. It could be success. It could be that um, everyone opens a business after they reach a certain age. It could be something that's good. But nevertheless, there are spirits that are in that lineage which cause a perpetuation of events to happen in the lives of anyone that is in that bloodline. Um, these spirits are extremely familiar with your family. And that is why they are called familiar spirits because they are familiar with each and every part of your family. They are familiar with your history. They are familiar with the tendencies of the family. They are familiar with how everyone thinks and what makes you tick. And over time, once you're born, that spirit will study you and be able to know how, what makes you tick, what, what, what makes you upset, what makes you happy so that they will be able to police and to enforce the stronghold that is in that bloodline. And here we get to the signs. Many of us I've noticed, and, and I, I know I can say this because I've seen it in my own life and I've seen it uh, with people that are close to me, many of us are influenced by these entities. And um, we are 
heavily influenced by these entities in order to perpetuate cycles. Whatever the cycle is, if it's a cycle, if it's if it is a cycle of success, if it is a cycle of failure, it is because we are influenced by these entities to perpetuate this cycle. These entities, these these uh, familiar spirits, are capable of creating scenarios to keep us bound. Um, many times we think that these scenarios that are being created are from God and they're not from God. They're a product of these, um, they're a product of something that was created by these spirits to keep us bound in this cycle. For example, um, for example, let's say I'm in a relationship and this relationship is toxic for me. Um, this relationship, um, I'm being verbally abused. I'm being emotionally abused. And um, I'm on my way out of the relationship because of the fact that I'm starting to read my Bible or I'm going to a self-help group, I'm going to a therapist, and I'm getting to know more about who I am, and I'm starting to love myself more. But the cycle in my family and the what, what, what usually goes on in my family is that every woman always meets a guy that is constantly abusing her, whether it's... Um, physical, emotional, verbal, mental, the person who she's in a relationship is always being abused. And this is what they fall into. They think they're going to get out of the relationship, but they wind up being in the relationship for the rest of their life, however long that is. So I'm on my way out of this relationship, but we have this familiar spirit that is in the bloodline to police this cycle that is in my family tree. So what happens? I'm about to leave this relationship. I'm feeling good about myself. And then out of nowhere, I start to have doubts like, oh man, maybe I shouldn't leave this person. Maybe I'm doing, so you, you become fearful. You become fearful to say, oh my goodness, if I leave this relationship, then maybe no one will want me, or maybe I'm doing the wrong thing, or maybe it's me, maybe it's me, maybe I could do something that's different. And if I'm different, then the person won't be as mean. Maybe it's something that I can change about myself. So then you have the thoughts of, um, doubt entering in and you start to second guess what you know is the right thing to do. So then this spirit, but you're still not budging. And this spirit understands by not necessarily by reading your thoughts, but by reading your actions, the spirit understands that, okay, I've, I've, I've sent these, um, these thoughts of doubt to her or to him, but I've sent these, I'm sorry, these uh, thoughts of doubt to her, but she's not moving. She's still not reacting the way that I thought she would react. So let me go ahead and cause a car to pass by that's playing their song. And in your moment of doubt, in your moment of contemplation, you hear a car passing down the street and it's playing the song that was playing on the radio when you first met that person that you are trying to separate yourself from. What people tend to do is they tend to think that's a sign because they hit this roadblock. 
They were on their way out of the relationship. They hit a roadblock where they started to second guess what they were doing. And then in the middle of them contemplating whether or not they should remove themselves from the relationship or stay here, they hear their song or that person's favorite song or the song um, that was playing on the radio when they first met. They take that to be a sign that they need to be with the person. Or sometimes they take that to be a sign from God that they need to stay with that person. And most of the time, I, I, I can't say never because you have to take every situation um, individually and you have to understand everybody's history and what's going on. But most, most likely... Most likely when something like this goes on, it is not God. It is not God telling you to stay in an abusive relationship. It is that familiar spirit that is familiar with you and familiar with your tendencies. And the Bible says that the Satan is the prince and the power of the air. And because he is the prince and the power of the air, he is able to control a lot of stuff that goes on in this earth. And this is why when we pray, a lot of stuff doesn't come to us right as we pray it because there are stratospheres that we need to break through because there is interference in the air because Satan is the prince and the power of the air. If we read Daniel, uh, the, I believe it's the ninth and the 10th chapter. It speaks about how Daniel prayed to God and, and Daniel was fasting and he was mourning because he needed God to do some things. He needed God to do something for the people of Israel. And, um, I believe it was the ninth chapter where the angel came to him and the angel said, you were heard on the first day, but because of the fact that when um, the answer was dispersed to Daniel, the answer was held up. And Daniel's prayers, Daniel's continual prayer, um, brought about Michael the archangel, which came to help Gabriel, which is the heralding angel who was coming with the answer. Michael the archangel was released because of Daniel's prayers in order to help him to come through with the answer. And I just brought that out to reiterate the fact that the enemy is the prince and the power of the air. And so when we're dealing with anything that has to do with being down here in this atmosphere that we're in, this is not governed by anything that's good. So unless we are constantly in our words, unless we are constantly feeding ourselves with the word of God and feeding ourselves with things that are going to build up our spirits, we can be heavily influenced easily by these familiar spirits. And we will not be able to tell the difference because our spirit is most sensitive to the things that we feed it to, we feed to it the most, just like our bodies. If we feed our bodies vegetables and things that are good for our bodies, then our body is able to break down the nutrients that are in things like that and send it throughout our body so that our nails grow, our hair grows, um, we have more energy, our skin is clear as opposed to when we eat junk food and it does nothing but break us down and give us bad skin and give us bad moods. The effects of putting good things into our body will lead to good effects. And so because many of us are not um, uh, digesting the word of God enough or digesting good things enough, we're not able to decipher. We're not able to discern what is God and what is not. And unfortunately, there are a lot of us who are in the body of Christ and we are falling prey 
to the tricks of the enemy. We are falling prey to the familiar spirits. We are falling prey to the strong men that are in our bloodlines that are causing us to be held in this cycle. Because the strong men are there to police the bloodline so that no one will be able to break away because the cycle has to keep going. So the next time you have a situation and you don't know which way to go and you think you're being led in one direction, make sure you talk to God about it. Ask God to order your steps. If he has to speak to you through his word, ask him to order your steps. The Bible says that if we acknowledge him in all our ways, he will direct our paths. God is faithful. God will lead you in the right path. And just remember that every sign is not from God. Until next time, be blessed.